You've probably already heard about this, but it's too funny not to talk about. Seems like Elon Musk is going to be getting rid of the block feature on Twitter. From the man himself, the wise leader of men, block is going to be deleted as a feature, except for DMs. It makes no sense. Well, being able to block someone's actually been a pretty long-standing feature of most social media platforms, so I feel like it makes sense, you know? Uh, sometimes you don't like people, sometimes people are harassing you. Uh, I don't know, seems valid. The immediate thing that I think when I when I see this is like safety considerations, you know, blocking stalkers uh, or or keeping people from like directly harassing that sort of thing. The Apple App Store requires social media apps to have a block function to mitigate harassment. Is that true? Wow. Well, considering the fact that Elon Musk has already violated European Union standards for uh, social media hate speech policing. Uh, it makes sense to me that he would stumble his way into violating some more preconditions as well. Now, keep in mind, I don't think that Twitter can really continue to exist in its current form if it's removed from the App Store. That would be insane. A lot of people access Twitter through the Apple App Store, where they download it from it and, you know, go through it there. Uh, it would really, really, really destroy the ability for the already dying app to reach large portions of a new audience. It's also against Google TOS as well. Is that true? Um, my guess is that he's not actually going to go through with this, you know, like, as we know, Elon Musk will tweet anything and he is a halfwit. So he probably didn't run this by anyone. He just had a thought and said it. I mean, he says tons of stuff he doesn't actually do. Uh, the idea of removing it is if it would lead to consequences that severe. I think that like, there are probably a bunch of people behind the scenes right now who are like, you know, Elon, you're so smart. You're so cool. You're so, you're so thoughtful. Unfortunately, there's this, there's this evil thing that Apple does that, that will keep you from doing this. And we're probably going to get him like vague tweeting about Apple being 1984 in the near future, you know, that kind of shit. You know what I'm talking about? We'll see if it actually does happen. If it does actually happen, uh, that would be pretty bad and pretty dumb. Uh, my first thought was about like, you know, as a safety issue, obviously, if it's a well-considered issue to the point that even Apple has it, like, listed in TOS or whatever, like, clearly, I'm not the only one to think about that. It would be pretty bad if you had a stalker or a serial harasser. I'm surprised he didn't say, make it impossible to block blue checkmark users, because the past, like, few months of Twitter changes have all been oriented around trying to encourage as many people to buy blue as possible. First, there was the highly selective and totally partial, uh, like, Twitter ad payout thing, but you only actually get Twitter payout based on ad uh, data collected from other blue check marks. And then he made it so you can hide your blue check mark because people were getting bullied for having them and preemptively blocked. So, yeah, I don't know. Pretty dumb, pretty silly, pretty goofy, I would say. Um, really wacky stuff. We'll see if it actually happens. Check Matt Bender's retweets. Blue Sky almost didn't have a block until Matt Iglesias came on. Well, blue, blue the hype with Blue Sky has pretty much died down anyway, you know. I, I'm the second, or at least for a time, I was the second most blocked person on all of Blue Sky. So I'm, I'm happy to be a, like a, 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 a test case for the feature. Surely if Elon removes blocks, he won't be able to block anyone himself. Well, again, I don't think this is actually going to happen. However, with that being said, you know, it's not as though Twitter doesn't already have preferential and selective rules behind the scenes for Elon Musk specifically, right? I mean, when they went, when they leaked, was it a leak or did he just release it? The Twitter source code. There was code in there that specifically referred to Musk, like to promote his tweets above other people's. He just released it. Okay. He accidentally leaked it while showing it off. I don't know the details. Whatever the case is, I doubt much will come of this. Though it would be kind of funny. It would sort of hasten the death of the site, you know. I, I don't know. Serious question. If this does all go through, are people who are still stockholders of Twitter going to be able to sue Elon? No. Elon is not the CEO of Twitter. He appointed a woman to be the CEO. Uh, uh, I forget her name. Uh, some lady. Uh, he's the owner of Twitter. Um, uh, CEOs under standard contract are hired by the um, board of directors with a fiduciary responsibility to maximize or at least, you know, heighten returns uh, for the company, meaning that they can be taken to court if they are uh, very, very bad at their job in a way that's found to be negligent or malicious. 
Uh, Elon is not CEO. He owns the company. He can do whatever he wants with it. Other shareholders are just along for the ride, you know. He wasn't appointed by the uh, by the shareholders. He is the shareholders. Um, they'll still be quite mad at him, though. There's also an argument to be made that um, there are people who have, uh, you know, who took money out to uh, allow him to make the purchase, who could... Uh, I, I think there's some... Does anyone remember that? There's some stuff in the contract about, like... Um, financial expectations concerning money that was fronted for his purchase. Was that a Saudi Arabia thing? Am I misremembering this? Whatever the case is, I doubt he's going to be sued over it. Are there any shareholders other than Elon? I thought he owned the whole company. No, well, maybe there are a few. Certainly he owns the vast majority. I thought he owned all of it, but there's um, there there's the, uh, the people who fronted money for the purchase. It's a public company? No, it's private. It's not publicly listed. Right? Yeah, you can't buy shares of, of Twitter right now. I'd love to try it, Ryan, dude. Is Twitter still pub? Wait, hold on. Is Twitter publicly... Tra I thought it wasn't, because you'd be buying it from Elon. No, yeah, it's been it was delisted from the NYSE on November 8th, 2022, right after Elon Musk bought it. Yeah, he bought out all of the company's outstanding shares for $44 billion at $54.20 a share. Yeah, um, no, there, it's, it's, not, it's not public. Not on the uh, stock exchange. If it was publicly traded, the stock would be in the trash. Yeah, probably. Wait, he's the only shareholder? I'm pretty sure a CEO can't be there. No, he's not the CEO. The CEO is the lady that he appointed. Technically, like, the company doesn't really need a, a, a dedicated CEO. Like, Elon could be the CEO because he, he owns it, you know. Um, gotcha. Thank you, Archrev. He didn't buy it out completely. There are still a few other people. We're splitting hairs. He owns the company. Thank you. Anyway, we'll see if it happens, but I, I sincerely doubt it. Google who owns Twitter. Who owns Twitter? Elon Musk owns Twitter. What other information are we are we trying to parse right now? I don't know what other information we're trying to parse. Yeah, he owns it. He just owes money to other people. I will not, facetious. Who owns Elon? I don't know. The Saudis? Whatever. Saudi Saudi Arabia, um, Qatar, and other like pretend Islamic, super wealthy uh, slaves slave nations have been putting a lot of effort lately, and the UAE have been putting a lot of effort lately into. Uh, with our politics in the same way that we have historically done to others. Pretend? Oh, dude, do you think the leadership at Qatar, the UAE, or Saudi Arabia give a shit about Allah? Do you, like, the, like the Saudi royal family is like, how do we convert, uh, you know, the, 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 the big Minecraft block they all worship into like a casino or something? You know, they don't give a shit. That big clock tower they built was like a, yeah, yeah, they like to pretend the, the 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 big clock tower they built was like a travesty. People hated them for that. It's like the biggest clock tower in the world. It's 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 incomprehensibly large. The um Abraj al Bait, I think. Whenever I see a clock tower, I just instantly think, oh, it's like Big Ben, smiley face, but it's it's not. This is like fifty million times its size. Uh here, wait. Can I can I get a size comparison? Okay, here we go. Yeah, so there. Just in case anyone was curious, the hundred meters tall versus six hundred meters tall. It's uh, yeah, it's 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 kind of hard to tell. It's uh, very large, actually. Mo yeah, mogged exactly. The bigger Ben, apparently. Yeah, the uh, Royal Clock Tower Hotel. This is a hotel, by the way. Uh, three billion dollars, or uh, one fifteenth of Twitter, more or less. How much is a room? Probably a lot. Go to the Wikipedia page, they have a size comparison. I love size comparisons. Comparison of these clock towers at the same scale. I see. These are the same scale. Jesus Christ, look. Just the clock part of the clock tower is like almost the entire height of Big Ben. How wild is that? God damn. It's so lame how the tower's design is that of a boring generic apartment building. Yeah, it's kind of... Like, think about it. This is literally like the most important holy site in the world, you know? I guess next to the Vatican, this is like the epicenter of global Islam. More than a billion people worship the like the concept of this and then they're like okay we'll build a big clock tower hotel you know so what like this doesn't look very islamic you really couldn't go for a more islamic vibe like just ima like imagine if they had like the whole the vatican and 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 like a billion catholics visited the vatican every year which they don't but imagine if they did and they were like i know how we can improve the vatican okay what if we built like a steel and glass office building but like really big you know, like, really? That's, that's how we're going to 
jazz up this ancient holy site? Yeah, build the Trump Hotel. Why are rich people tasteless? These aren't just any rich people, man. These are this fucking Saudi royal family. You know, this is like the grand poobah of, of tasteless, wealthy people. If I recall correctly, the Saudis also tightly control and fleece people for visas to go. Oh, yeah, no, this is one of their big, like, it's basically, think about it. It's basically like a mandatory audience of tourism, you know, because all the Muslims come to flock uh, for the, the holy thing, right? So it's like free tourism. Yeah, let's jack up the prices. Let's charge them for fare. Let's like hold people's passports until they pay fine. Like just, you know, whatever, man. Yeah, they have really, really, really monetized the whole process. We're mandated to go at least once in our lives. Yeah, it's free audience, man. It's not tourism, it's pilgrimage. It's tourism, man. That's how, it, from a financial perspective, that's what it is. People come into the holy city, they have to find accommodations, they have to buy food, like travel, all this stuff costs money, and the royal family has set things up in the city to, you know, maximize the... But do they have Dubai's poop trucks? I don't think they have Dubai's poop trucks. How does the Saudi government stay afloat financially? Is it literally just... Oil. It's oil. It's oil. Lots of oil. Is the oil market not constantly falling? Um, it, it varies. If you're asking if Saudi Arabia is in trouble in the long run, the answer is yes. As people move more towards renewable, like America is like the biggest oil producing country in the world, but we use that oil domestically. We get a ton of it through fracking in Alaska. And also if we moved all the way to green energy, like internally, we could still ship it around the world. And if we no longer ship it around the world, we have tons of other industry in this country. Saudi Arabia doesn't. So don't we export a lot too? Eh, not so much. We use a lot of it domestically. We don't ship out as much as Saudis or Russians do. The, yeah, this is one of the big reasons why the Saudi government, Qatar, the UAE, have been more and more invested in promoting um, like conservative causes here in America. Same with Russia. Uh, Republicans are like, uh, you know, ride or die with the oil and gas industry because there are multiple nations who just their livelihood depends entirely on oil remaining valuable. So if you've ever wondered why, like the debate on climate change seems to be so like financially backed, a lot of it's not just like American oil and gas companies. It's the international oil cabal funding them. You know, that's true. That, that's true. Would you call business trips tourism? Well, in a, when you're talking about the financials of the place you're visiting, sure. I mean, you know, kind of depends contextually.